when I first realized what this was and then had to explain it to my Argentinian students, I was like, oh my God, I've been doing that all this time? Hello, and welcome back to this series where I complain about languages on the internet. For those of you that are not familiar with what I'm talking about, I've been doing this up until this point on my other channel, on No Backup Plan. I've done a few episodes already on French and Italian, vraiment pas mal, which means really not bad, which actually means really quite good, uh, depending on how you say it. One finger in Italian is un dito. So logically, you would think, okay, uh, one finger is masculine, so maybe two fingers would also be masculine, right? If only it were that simple. And it has gotten such an amazing reaction so far that I've decided to bring it over to here. So I can complain about languages to more people. This is where I air my grievances. It's all in good fun, of course. And I think it's high time that we talk about English, which is a language that doesn't make very much sense. First of all, a little bit of context. I've lived many lives before I became a filmmaker and a creator of things online. And one of those lives, which is very short-lived, it was brief, but I taught English to Argentinian students while I was living in Argentina. Now, it is only when you teach a language that you speak natively to non-native speakers that you realize, and quickly, how little certain things can make sense. The difficulties that you suddenly face in trying to explain certain concepts that you just took for granted. I feel like I was spared a lot of bullshit learning English because I learned it as a kid and that was that. And recently I saw this tweet which kind of reminded me why my Argentinian students would look at me like I was insane so often. Yes, English can be weird. It can be understood through tough, thorough thought though. And when I read that I was just like, whoa, that's right, we have a very strange language when it comes to when it comes to spelling and also pronunciation and there are infinite examples of this i mean english is just made up of these sorts of mind-boggling constructions so i'm going to dive into three points that i remember causing my argentinian students absolute hell insane inconsistencies this is like the warm-up round i'm going to throw another example to you right now 40 is spelled F-O-R-T-Y, okay? So not four, F-O-U-R, F-O-R, just F-O-R. And 90 is spelled N-I-N-E-T-Y, so like nine T. But fourth is spelled F-O-U-R-T-H, and ninth is spelled N-I-N-T-H. Should be ninth. The rules just don't, I don't know, they just don't apply. You know, I saw somewhere on the internet, you know, firefly is the opposite of waterfall. It's like, cool, great. English is weird. Read and lead rhyme, and red and lead rhyme, but read and lead don't rhyme, and neither do red and lead. English feels like this mishmash of different rules and systems that we try to make make sense, if that makes sense. We try to justify it, but I don't think there's anything anyone could say or do to prove to me that this makes sense. I remember growing up learning these sort of like easy to remember rules for spelling. So for example, I before E except for after C. I couldn't even say that properly. I before E except after C. So in practice, it helps sometimes. I believed in that rule because I had thought that I had received good advice. You see what I did there? Except no, because it feels like there's more exceptions than actual words that follow this rule. Isn't that weird? See, that right there is an example. I thought I was proficient in spotting the deficiencies and inconsistencies of society. Clearly, English doesn't make it easy for foreigners. I thought it was juicier than that. This makes me feel like a feisty scientist. This language is an idiomatic mess. Look, I feel like I have a right to say that as an American, right? I've been kind of being careful. I've been treading lightly as I complain about French and Italian, right? I don't want to offend the native speakers, but I'm a native speaker of English, so I feel like I can say whatever I want. This language is an idiomatic mess. We say as quiet as a mouse, right? Or as quiet as mice to mean quiet. But have you ever heard mice? They are anything but quiet. They're extremely loud. Maybe I've spent too much time in big cities and that's just on me, but mice are one of the loudest things like one of the major reasons that I've stayed up at night in the past. Why is it that a fat chance and a slim chance essentially mean the same thing? Also, why is a wise guy and a wise man 
Like those are two opposites, except they should mean the same thing. By the skin of your teeth means to have narrowly avoided something, but that's disgusting and it doesn't make any sense. Like I don't have any skin on my teeth, I don't think. Your alarm goes off in the morning when it turns on. You can see the stars when they are out, but when the lights are out, you can't see anything. Compound verbs. Compound verbs have got to be like one of the worst things about the English language. I mean, truly, when I first realized what this was and then had to explain it to my Argentinian students, I was like, oh my God, I've been doing that all this time? Basically, according to Wikipedia, in linguistics, a compound verb or complex predicate is a multi-word compound that functions as a single verb. Basically, it's multiple words coming together to act like one verb. So, for example, and we're gonna use this example, I think this is a great example. Instead of saying to rise, you can say to get up. Two words, to get up. The whole concept of compound verbs, it's like you don't realize it until you have to explain it to somebody. Get is actually an incredibly versatile word in the English language. And instead of coming up with original words for each of these verbs, we just wanted to remix and rehash the same words that we already had. So there's, of course, to get, right? Kind of like to acquire something. But then if we're gonna talk about telling somebody to stand up, you say, get up. If you're telling somebody to avoid something that might hit them, you say, get down. With friends, we try to get along. With breakups, we try to get over it. When you're trying to explain something to somebody, you wanna get through to them. If you're barely scraping by with money, you're getting by. If you're getting frustrated with somebody and explaining something to them, you might say, get with it. All of these different verbs that when you're trying to explain to a non-native speaker, they're like, what? So get up, get down, get through, get by. Like it, it just, it doesn't make sense at all. These, these words that have other meanings, you smash them together and they have new meanings. And it actually leads to some really hilarious misunderstandings because you might be saying something to somebody, right? Just normal conversation. But if they don't have the meaning, if they don't understand the meaning of that compound verb, they can utterly miss the point of what you're trying to say. You know, if I just said, I got up and left. If, if somebody doesn't understand the meaning of to get up, they're gonna completely not understand what you're saying. It's just gonna sound like a mishmash of words. I got up and left. Like, that's not, it doesn't even sound like a proper sentence. Okay, bonus round here. One really funny thing that native English speakers do that I didn't, I was unaware of, is to say, no, yeah where we answer in the affirmative, but starting with the word no. And it's just taken for granted, I suppose. We just know that you're supposed to not accept that first no. You just get that when somebody says, no, yeah, they mean, yeah. So why are we saying no? And this becomes really apparent when you're talking to foreigners who maybe don't understand that, and they get confused. They're like, wait, are you saying no? Or are you saying yeah? Be clear, please. So now I, I take extra steps. I make an extra effort to be as clear as possible. If somebody says something to me and I want to answer as clearly as possible, I don't say, no, yeah. I say, yeah, no, totally. So there you have it. Uh, I'm going to leave it at that for now. But if you guys enjoy this, please give this a like and I will do more of these. I'm going to basically base it off of your reaction. There's so much material with the English language and with all languages in general. It doesn't feel like any of them make any sense whatsoever because of course it's humans that made these languages up and humans don't like to do things very rationally, do we? If you're curious, as I mentioned before, I do already have other episodes in this series out now on my other channel on No Backup Plan. I'll link to them down in the description below. I will also link to my language learning class in the description below for those of you interested and passionate about language learning as I am. Could be an interesting resource to look into if you're curious. And having said that, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you soon.